Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to the Acts Ministry broadcast. I'm so glad that you've tuned in today. We're continuing our study in the book of Daniel. It is a godsend to be able to study the prophets during this time in world history, especially the book of Daniel. Because the book of Daniel, as we foresaid, reaches into the book of Genesis and all the way into the book of Revelation. It reaches backwards and it reaches forwards, backwards into time, forward into the future, because it lives out Babylon. Daniel is taken to Babylon, him and his three companions. They're in Babylon. They have been placed in a school to learn uh, the language of the Babylonians and so forth and so forth. And we know in the book of Genesis, we have Shinar, where the great hunter, the great hunter had brought people together. And the people were one mind and one of unity. And they was going to build a tower to heaven. That's what they thought. Nimrod, uh, who is a great hunter during this time, they wanted to build a place into the heavens. And we see that that place was called Babel because God changed their language because they were in rebellion. Then we get to the book of Revelation and we hear the angels crying, Babylon the great has fallen. So we're living today in the 21st century, 2014, and we're living in a Babylonian uh, system, a Babylonian worldly carnal system where it is a system of of man, a system of flesh, carnality. That's where we are. So when you look at what is going on with Daniel after they've sh- they have been shipped to Babylon, in chapter number 2, we see that the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, has a dream. He has a dream, but he doesn't remember his dream. And then he gets angry with, with those wise men in Babylon that should be able to tell him the dream, but they couldn't because he couldn't remember it. So he was furious, and he put out a decree that all of the wise men in Babylon would be killed. Now, when Daniel heard this, he says to the king that if he would give him some time, him and Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, his companion, that he went and told to pray and to seek the God of heaven because they needed an answer to this dream. And they did that. And God gave them an answer. God gave Daniel a revelation of what was going on in the king's dream. God was trying to get a message to him to help him to understand that he was supreme ruler. He was the ruler of the universe. So Daniel was able to interpret the dream for the king. And after he had interpreted the dream for the king, we see that the king had dreamed about a head of fine gold. He had dreamed about breasts and arms of silver, belly and thighs of brass, legs of iron, feet part of iron and part of clay, which would which would make these toes with part iron and part clay. He saw this. Daniel rehearsed it to him. It came back to his memory and began to tell him what it all meant, what was going to happen, and how God had favored him to show him some things that was going to happen on the earth in the latter days. The Bible says, when the king heard Daniel's answer, he said of a truth, it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. So Nebuchadnezzar, he praised Daniel because of what Daniel did. Daniel was able to tell him what the dream meant, which the dream itself was prophecy. And I believe that if any time in the history of the world we need to understand prophecy is now, because prophecy is God's, it is, it is the hands on God's timepiece. Prophecy is, is when we look at prophecy is help us to determine what season we're in. So it's very, very important. And then in chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar, even though he heard this, it was some things that he he did he shouldn't have done. And one of the things that he did, he built this golden, golden image, this golden image. Since he was the head of gold, he built him a golden image. And when he built the golden image, he commanded 
everyone should worship the image at the sound of the music. So here you have an in, here, here you have here you have an image, and it's a huge statue. We're talking about we're talking about uh, sixty feet plus. We're talking about sixty cubics, which would be about ninety feet. You have this huge statue of gold, and they were supposed to worship it. Every time they heard the music, they were supposed to worship it. But here comes here comes the faith of those that believe in God, and that's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Very familiar uh, scripture passage of scripture and information that we've known since we were children. And the king wanted everyone to fall down and worship the image he had set up. Well, of course, you know that the three Hebrew boys, they couldn't do that because they believed in a great God, Jehovah, so they wasn't going to bow down and worship a statue. And when the king saw this and heard this, the Bible says he became very, very, very angry. That's in Daniel chapter 3, starting at verse 13. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought the, these men before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my God, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, now watch their reply, because this must become the reply that all of us need to have when things are not granted to us the way we want them to be granted to us so the king told him now we're going to play all this music and we need you to bow and when you hear all this go ahead and bow and he says now if you don't bow I'm going to cast you into the fiery furnace and when I cast you in the fiery furnace you will be destroyed but it says when he put all of them in there they wouldn't bow they knew, they said to the king, we're not careful to answer you about this. We're not afraid to answer you concerning this because they knew the God they served. They understood the God they served. So they told the king they were not going to bow, and they didn't bow. The king became very angry. Now, I want, I want you to see this in, in this prophecy, this image that was set up. This image that everyone had to bow to. And brothers and sisters, we know as we move towards the end time, there are so many images in this world that people worship, that people bow down to. So the Hebrew boys said, no, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. And the one thing I love, the one thing I love what they said, they said that their God is able to deliver them, but if he chooses not to, they still were not going to bow. See, these were not fair weather saints. They were saying, if God doesn't do it, we still won't bow. We got that much confidence and trust in him that if he, if he chooses not to, if he decides not to, we're not going to leave the church. We're not going to go crazy. We're not going to start a rebellion. If he chooses not to do it, we still going to stay focused and we still going to bless God. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in acsministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. So they threw him in the fiery furnace, and this is what happened once they got in there. In Daniel 3, verse 19, it says that, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage would change against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was to be heated. 
And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, hosing their hats and other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You see that. So it was so hot that when they put, put them in the fire, the men that threw them in were destroyed themselves. And that's how God does things. He knows how to free us. He knows how to free us without injuring us. He knows how to free us without destroying us. He knows how to free us. So they walking around free in the fiery furnace. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine what a sight that was? Here they are walking around free in the fiery furnace. And all of a sudden they saw a, a four figure. And, and the king looked and saw somebody else was in the fire. And the person that was in the fire, the king says he perceived that it was or that the image of the Son of God. We believe that that was nothing more than Jesus, no one else but Jesus in the fire with the Hebrew boys. And because he was in the fire with them, they didn't even smell like smoke. They didn't have one hair on their head singed because our God is an incredible God. And many times we'll try to explain this away. We'll try to say God took the heat out the fiery furnace. Well, he couldn't have done that because the heat destroyed the men who threw them in. So when they threw them in, the heat had to come past them had to come over the Hebrew boys to get to the men that threw him in. So because of that, because of that, it was heat in the fire. We got to understand that. God has other laws and other formulas. God, God is God. God is God. He could have chosen to blow out the fire. He could have chosen to destroy the armies. But God just allowed them to step into the fiery furnace. And the only thing they lost in the fiery furnace was the bondage the bondage that they had been in for many many years they lost it they lost it they lost it and that's what happened we got bondages that we've been in for years and 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 for decades but when we get into the part of testing god has a way of burning it off for us he has a way of destroying it he has a way of changing it so meshach Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fiery furnace. They came out and they were rejoicing. And the king was amazed by what had happened. So now because of all of this, they're able to influence the king. And they are appointed to very prestigious positions in the kingdom. And not only that, their God is exalted. Their God is exalted as a man of war. He is exalted as a wonderful, loving, powerful God that takes care of his people. So God received glory from it and honor from it during this time when the Hebrew boys was cast into the fiery furnace. Brothers and sisters, whatever you do, make sure God receives the glory and honor for it. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart.